Traveler! Paimon! Did you hear the news? They made it through this... Really? Woohoo! That's great! <laughs> it was a total breeze. I wasn't even trying. Uh, I made a few new test dishes and I was hoping everyone could try... Uh, uh, oh... Yeah, we... good idea! Okay, let me think. Pedo! Yep, you can definitely... Right now she should be down at the docks. Are we interrupting any? Chung Ling, <laughs> the woman of the hour. We were just talking about you. Oh, well, Beta was saying you and I should get ourselves on board sometime. Says the whole crew's been asking for us. <laughs> Seems like you three go way back. Oh, we really do. Beto and Shinyan are two of my oldest customers, and I've helped out in the kitchen on board Beto's ship in the past. Recently, Shinyan's been planning to do a show on board. That's the plan. Good music's meant for sharing. You guys should check it out sometime. Oh, will do. But I came here today because I made it into the Masterful Chef's finals, and I was just trying out some new dishes to bring to... Sure, beats drinking on an empty stomach. Oh, about time. I'm starving over here. Let's see. Oh, man. This chicken foo young's tasting awesome. Oh, this food is too good for me to be soaking up the alcohol with. <laughs> These three seem to have a great time with each other. Only thing is, you've got three dishes here. Chicken foo young, come and get it, and crystal shrimp. And they all taste kind of refreshing. Is refreshed when you spend all your time at sea, you don't have a lot of choice when it comes to food, especially on the longer voyages where you've got to stretch out your rations as far as you can. First thing you want to do when you get back on dry land is dig into a nice hot meal that's swimming in oil and has a ton of flavor. That's the exact opposite of Ming Wang's tastes. Oh, sure is. Beto's tastes are pretty similar to mine and Xiang Ling's. Ugh, Ming Wang. I am sick of hearing that name. Our tastes couldn't be more different. You'll never find us eating the same bowl of food. But last time when you were chatting with him... We're evenly matched. Guess that makes us equals. But I'm sorry, limp cabbage leaves are never gonna do it for me. Oh, I hear ya, I hear ya. Steamed cabbage and broth might be upper class and look fancy and all, but man is it boring! It's never gonna give you that flavor explosion you get with some of the other dishes out. So, Xinyan... I beat well, not so much mild. I just think you maybe missed a beat somewhere. Exactly. This is some fine cooking, no question about that. Beat? Oomph? Beat? Um, oomph. Beat, yeah. Do you know what a beat is? I only know music, though. I'm nowhere near your level when it comes to cooking, so... No, no, you're both completely... I actually thought as much while I was cooking them. Even though this was a brand new combination, seems like she's found her muse. Um, does that mean music theory is compatible with cook- Hey! Paimon didn't quite get the implication, but but- Okay, I think I know what I need to do. Great! So this way- Don't hold back, just get out there and do your thing. You're a pro, Xiangling, and you've- t Well, I think so anyway. More than any other chef. And there ain't a whole lot of people I'd be willing- <laughs> I'll do my best. Thanks, everyone. All right, we'll leave you to it. I'm gonna... Xiangling, they both had pretty strong taste. You sure that won't be a problem? Shouldn't we get a second opinion from someone with milder taste? That's a good point. Beto likes her greasy stir-fry. Now, who do we know whose tastes are on the mild side? Uh, who? 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 you just missed last time we were there. Huh? Oh, Paimon remembers. He said that we just need to speak his name and poof. Um, will he definitely hear us saying his name, though? Da-da-da. 
happening? Hmm, let me try again. Choo! Uh, that's weird. Does he not want to... Oh, wait. So, let me get this straight. Um, well... Not both, actually. Oh, right. Well, you should be the one to try it, then. <laughs> I'm unclear. Oh, okay, then. You called? Whoa! Oh, he actually came! You spoke my name, did you not? When I make you a promise, I will honor it. Blink of an eye and poof! He's there! That's how you know he's an adeptus. An adeptus? Oh, Xiao, was it? Hi there! It was me. I've made it into the finals of this year's Masterful Chefs, and I'm testing some dip Customers. And that includes me? Uh-huh. The traveler says you prefer mild food. Just the kind of person I'm looking for. If you don't mind, I'd like you to try- <sighs> Since it's you, I will do it. Yay! Hmm. Um, how is it? Tastes pretty good. Huh? I can't believe it. An adeptus says he... You excel in the culinary arts. I'm rem... That chef cooks dishes with soul, as do you. Uh, who do you think he means? Smiley Yensho? If I had to find fault with something, the two sides are a little strong for my taste. Just my own opinion. Do not fixate on it. All right, go easy on the sides. Thank you, Adeptus friend. It was really great to meet you. I'll be leaving now. See you next time. Paimon still can't believe he actually can. So, what would happen if we called his name again now? Do you think he'd come back? Oh! Kinda maybe not really joking. Jeez. Good news. After two rounds of taste testing, I've had an idea on what to do next. Great! Lucky we picked the right people to- I better head back and try this out a few times. Oh, and the final is in Yujing Terrace. You better come and watch. Will do. Good luck! <laughs> You've been- Welcome, everyone, to the Masterful Chef's Final. At the appointment of this organizing committee, I am your host and officiator, Yenfei. Hey, Yenfei's here, too! This event is brought to you by the Liyue Qixing in collaboration with a number of participating enterprises. The competition is to... We saw many contestants from all over Liyue in the selections process, and all of them were outstanding chefs in their own right. In just a few short moments, the finals will take place right here before your very eyes. As the officiator, it is my honor and privilege to represent the organizing committee and indeed the people of Liyue and overseeing today's proceedings. Next, please allow me to introduce the judges. There will be a select panel and an audience panel. The three members of the select panel are... The Tianchuan, Lady Ningguang, the Yuheng, Lady Keqing, and last but not least, gourmet connoisseur, Uncle Tian. In addition to these three, ten judges will be chosen from among the audience to sample our contestants' dishes and cast their votes. That makes a total of 13 judges with 13 votes between them. Each judge will vote for their preferred finalist and the... 
And now, please join me in welcoming our two contestants into the arena. Come on out! To my left, a competition favorite down from Dihua. Life's harsh when you live on a marsh, but this kitchen ace will put a smile on your face. Please welcome, Smiley Yanxiao. Uh, uh, hi, everyone. Whoa, Yanxiao made it into the finals, too! Yanxiao! Chin up, shoulders back, everyone from... Huh? Oh. And to my right, a stalwart of Liyue Harbor culinary scene, a little feisty with a whole lot of spicy. Give it up for Xiangling! Uh, and her mysterious assistant, who knows who? Hi, my nose. It's Guoba. Hey, everybody. I'll do my best. Contestants, please repeat after me. As a finalist in Masterful Chefs, I solemnly swear to commit myself fully, compete fairly, and abide by... As a finalist in Masterful Chefs, I solemnly swear... Uh, as a finalist in Masterful Chefs, I, um... And I, for my part, promise to uphold the principles of... Now, I will hand things over to the select panel judge, Ningguang, for the announcement of today's theme. Thank you all for being here today at the Masterful Chefs Finals. I am the Tianxuan Ning. The organizers have chosen the theme for today's event, and that theme is... Of Earth and Waterborne. Hmm. Just like the Feast of Bounteous Land. It really... It's like Surf and Turf, but the deep and meaningful version. The rules are simple. The one who receives the most votes wins. Tailor your dishes to... Well then. I look forward to both of your contributions. Contestants will have one hour of cooking time available and may only use ingredients provided by the organizers in their dishes. Okay, without further ado, let the cooking commence. Begin. Time to pull out all the stops. Show everyone. Traveler, climb on. <laughs> Thanks for coming to support me. Light it up! Light it up! First things first, get the stove on. Xiao thought the side should be milder, which makes sense to contrast with the main dish. And I guess that's what Xin Yan meant. You gotta have on beats and off beats. Hmm, but at the same time... Triple layered consomme is pretty bland to begin with. I can't have two sides with the same texture.
and chili chicken is the main event. Can't afford to compromise too much here. Whoa, what's this? Hold up. Things are taking a Shengling's mysterious assistant appears to be aiding her opponent. Judges, are we going to allow this? We knew in advance that Shengling would be accompanied by a mis- I take no issue with it. In any case, the- <laughs> No competition would be complete without a little drama. <laughs> Prior to the competition, the judges reviewed both contestants, and we can comfortably confirm that neither side is- Xiangling is a highly accomplished chef, and her assistant is more like family to her. Xiangling prepares all of her own dishes herself. All that her assistant will do is occasionally provide a fire source. Given Xiangling's level of culinary skill, I appreciate everyone's concerns. The presence of a mysterious ass but the mysterious assistant has now started cheerleading for Smiley Yen Xiao too, demonstrating total impartiality. That's right. Boba's not really outside help. Boba just likes to watch people cook. I'm sure the only reason they went over there is to try to. I give you all my word. Boba will not. I say that as someone who's eaten Yen Xiao's cooking at Wang Shuwen before. I see. Hmm. I have no objections. It's an honor and a privilege. Hmm. The judges and the officiator accept this explanation. Yan Xiao, are you all right? I don't know what's wrong with me. I've never been so nervous in my life. Take it easy. I've been there before. I can help. Try saying a tongue twister to yourself in your head. Why my dad? That's a bit specific. Because that's what I do. Uh, uh, I guess I'll think of my mom then. Uh, anyway, you should carry on. I'll... No being held up i'm finished already huh oh right uh, th then i need to focus up and win this thing here you go that's the attitude we want you're a very capable chef yen xiao yes you're right i can do this i can do this thank you Xiangling. and thanks to your um well thanks time for me to get cooking Both contestants have now finished cooking. I would like to invite them to present their dishes to the judges for evaluation. We will proceed in the order that the contestants finished. My dishes: Ji Yun chili chicken with sides of triple layered consomme and crystal shrimp. The theme is of earth and waterborne, which includes land and sea. In other words, my main dish, Ji Yun chili chicken, is a combination of fowl and chilies. Juyu and chilies capture the essence of the mountains where they grow. A triple-layered consomme also uses fowl, and its other ingredients are ham and bamboo shoots. These are also flavors from the mountains, but they complement and contrast with the chicken dip. The crystal shrimp is made from a combination of rice, shrimp meat, and carrot. A thin, translucent skin wraps diced carrot and a whole... Shrimps are a gift from the ocean. Tightly wrapping them in a skin made from rice makes this dish a blend of land and sea. Fresh with... Ooh, a strong delivery there from Xiangling. Let's see what... My dish is... Adeptus Temptation with a mint salad and golden shrimp balls. As Xiangling says, earth and water means land and sea. So birds, land animals, and Adeptus Temptation is a much-loved dish in Liyue, 
And as chef of Wang Shuin, I've always been proud to offer this as the signature specialty dish of our menu. It's a complex dish with very particular ingredients. Smoked ham, crab, the mint salad is my first side. Cool and tender with a subtle sweetness. It's a perfect answer to the rich and strong flavors of the Adeptus Temptation. Golden Shrimp Balls is a time-honored classic loved by everyone. A hearty and wholesome broth, followed up with a shrimp ball. <laughs> oh, pure bliss. Mmm, can smell it from all the way Judges, please sample the dishes. Mmm, very impressive. Both contestants' dishes are well-considered, expertly made, and truly delicious. I'm gonna have another golden shrimp uh, um, I mean, <clears throat> I shall- Now, Xiang Ling has taken an interesting approach here. She's chosen a cold dish as her main. It's also a unique take on Zhuiyun chili chicken. Although the dish as a whole is served cold, the chili peppers have been stir-fried. So they're still just... <clears throat> this Adeptus Temptation is quite exceptional. The triple layer consomme is also a very... Judges of the select panel, I will... Also, the organizing committee has selected today's audience judges, and they are now evaluating the... Uh, how are we not involved in this? Paimon has buckets of passion and oodles of expertise when it... Me! For all the chefs there are in the world, and for all the amazing dishes that I can cook, the fact remains that you're the one who treats Paimon the best. Thank you all for waiting. All votes have been received. I now invite Ningguang to take the floor and announce the results of the Masterful Chef's Finals. It is my pleasure to announce that the winner of the Masterful Chef's Finals is... <laughs> by a mere one vote margin. Xiangling! Wow! <laughs> what? How is it so close? Well, there it is. <sighs> I knew it. It was a close contest, but we have a winner. Liu Harbor's Xiangling has beaten Dihua Marsh's Yan Xiao by just one vote. There can only be one winner, but the fact that this was so close shows just how much both of these outstanding chefs managed to impress our judges. A big thank you to all the audience for being here today, especially those who have come from far and wide. As officiator, I declare the result of this competition to be fair and va- Thank you all for coming. Please exit the venue in an orderly fashion, and remember to take all of your personal belongings with you. Come on, let's go over and take a look. Looks like I won this time, Yan Xiao. But I'd still like to try your dish. Sure, I'll have. Oh, truly ex. Mm, this adeptus temp. <laughs> well, just goes to show that you have a taste for the finer things in life. No, no, you've got me all wrong. We're just a small neighborhood restaurant too, so I totally understand. Food is like. <sighs> is that right? Huh. I'd heard you'd gotten famous for your experimental approach to cooking and were all about fancy and exclusive foods. The same goes for you. You can't work in an in-kitchen unless you know how to consistently please customers. You're the kind of competition I'm glad to have. Let's... You got it. And next time we meet as competitors, let's both be even better than we are now. All right. Deal. Traveler, Paimon! Thanks for coming! Did you get to try the food? Don't even go there! Paimon still peed! <laughs> I can't believe it! You didn't get picked? You will? <laughs> oh, uh, the organizer said that Yen Xiao and I need to go register our delivery addresses. Apparently, they're gonna deliver an exclusive ingredients pack. I'll come find you guys after. Ah, uh, Xiangling! Looks like Kuching and Ningguang left already. Uh. <laughs> 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 Kuching, there you are! 
Oh. Huh? Is everything okay? <laughs> Traveler. I... In the competition, I voted for Smiley Yenxiao. So you're frustrated because you can't go back and vote for Xiangling and... No, that's not it. As a judge, I had a dude... Xiangling is my friend. So by rights, but as you know, I voted based purely on my personal... Ah, uh, it's no big deal. Just say it however comes naturally. Xiangling of all people isn't bothered about... Th oh, hey, here you are. Xiangling, there's something I need to tell you. Hmm? Wh what is it? My grandfather always said to me, in contests of food, always follow your heart. Which is to say that in gastronomical disputes, or indeed competition... Of course, that was just my grandfather's opinion. But, so... Despite the fact that I am your friend, I cast my vote for Smiley Yenxiao's Adeptus Temptation. <laughs> well, maybe it was. I like golden shrimp balls. Is that a problem? You were acting so serious that I honestly thought something was up. It's fine. Doesn't bother me one bit. Huh? You voted for who you wanted to. That's totally okay. And so, you made a point of telling me. Is that because... <clears throat> I... <sighs> Didn't I say already? I love this about you. You're just so conscientious about everything. Seeking reassurance is what novices do, and it's been a long time since I was a novice. The way forward from today will only get more challenging, as will the dishes I'll need to cook. Honestly, I'll need friends like you along the way. You have a strong sense of responsibility, Kuching. But you know, not everything is always about responsibility. Yes, you're a Qixing, but you're also you, Kuching. When you're with friends, you don't... You know that's what Ningguang's like, right? Beidou's always telling me about how well she gets along with Ningguang. They even play... So you see, Ningguang's kind of bold in that she doesn't let her identity and reputation get in the way of her ability... Traveler. Xiongling. Uh, anyway, what are we standing around here for? Oh, yeah! Pine on it nearly... La la la. Da, da, da. How strange. This doesn't make any sense. Does this mean the competition? Oh well. I suppose it. Yeah, we've waited this long already. They're right, Xiangling. Yep, there's still time. Let's be patient. On another note, I have some good news for you, Kuching. Master came by before the competition and filled in the parts that were missing. So now, in fact, I'll go find some Xiangling. Oh, uh, and Traveler. Huh? You only just beat Smiley Yanchow! Obviously not what I- You collect recipes, don't you? I thought you'd probably be needing this- Oh! <laughs> right! Time on you- Huh? <laughs> Jeez! Careful eating your words so fast, you'll get- <laughs> What are you staring at me for? Go on, go get on with your cooking-
follow the wind. The Traveler and I made one each. Here! Thank you. <clears throat> hmm? uh, what is it? What- I... This flavor... I've tasted it before. Uh, apologies, Xiongling, Traveler. Thank- It tastes wonderful, and... Quite amazingly... Somehow it took me right back to my childhood. Really? That's awesome! I didn't have a chance to fully explain before. In fact, when Master- You already knew. You mean, uh-huh? My dad taught me- Wait, but isn't this dish from Kut- About that. I do not believe that this recipe was my grandfather's creation. My grandfather was a well-known real estate tycoon in Liyue, and also a scholar. He was an avid collector of old books and was quite knowledgeable on many of Liyue's customs and traditions. That are no longer practiced. As a child, I used to spend a lot of time with him in his study. We'd read the classics together, then debate how much of it was actually genuine, and whether Rex Lapis was real or not. He used to say, books are just a bridge that bring us a little closer to history. It's up to- Since then, my grandfather has passed on, and I've grown up to become a Chi-Sing. My views on Rex Lapis have changed in this time too. From myth to re- For me, the name Rex Lapis is inextricably wound up with memories of my grandfather. Whenever I see his name written down, it always reminds me of sitting in my- As I said earlier, this recipe came from those same notes. It's an ancient dish that he was trying- Still, each time he tried cooking it, he'd always get me to have a taste while it was still warm. Ancient dish? Are cornbread buns really that old? Well, at least in my family it is. My dad learned how to make it from his dad, and supposedly we call them chili mince cornbread buns. They're a traditional folk food snack, easy to pack up and take with you on the road. So they're the perfect... La, la, la. <laughs> Seeing Woba just reminded me of something. I actually made this dish on the day I first met Woba. How did you first meet? It was in a cave in the mountains. I ducked inside to get out of the rain and saw an offering table in there. So I put the cornbread buns I brought with me on it. Then I ended up falling asleep. And when I woke up, I found out that Guoba had eaten every last one. Guoba followed me around ever since. We're practically family now. Hold up! Stop the conversation! Look! The... the stone! It's... it's... Guoba? What are you... Ah, oh, I see the chili mince cornbread buns have been served. Master! Granny, look! The, the stone cut statue looks just like Guoba! Oh, indeed it does. After all, Guoba is the deity you've been searching for. God of the stove. Guoba... Guoba is a god? You asked me if a sufficiently festive atmosphere would be enough to reawaken the stove god. And my answer is this. Yes. And no. The stove god has always been a deity with great affection for the people, and who acts in response to their desires. To him... The heart's passions and the heart's desires are not the same thing. Passion can be a technique, a skill, something derived from experience. But to masterful chefs is wonderfully exciting. But it is more an exercise of passion than of desire. And passion alone will not suffice to reawaken the stove god. But just now, when Kuching ate this dish he had longed for, a deeply held desire was fulfilled. As well as receiving an answer to her question, 
she also gained something much more precious. A moment of poignant nostalgia so vivid, it felt like she was right there alongside her grandfather. The enormous power unleashed by the fulfillment of this desire resonated with the Stove God statue and caused it to manifest once more the form it took in the past. Of course, the Stove God himself is not contained within the statue. <laughs> the true Stove God has been here with us all along. <sighs> How does it feel, seeing a statue of yourself from your glory days? Ah, <sighs> look at him. Still so majestic. Glory days? Wait, what happened? Did Roba used to be different from now? Oh, yes. Back in his day, your Guoba was once the patron god of the soil, but all the wisdom and power he had then, he has since surrendered to the soil itself. A god surrendering their power to the soil. I have the kinds of trials and tribulations that a land can face are far more than you could imagine. Droughts, floods, torrential rain, hurricanes, earthquakes, tsunamis, fires, and plagues. The threat of disaster will never fully disappear from Liyue. Even woes that have never been faced before in history will come to pass in the future. Such things affect you mortals far more than he once walked with you over the barren plains until you arrived at last at the harbor. He joined. It was his hand that lit the very first street lamp of Liyue and brought you mortals no longer remember him. But back in the age when you did, he was the closest of all the Adepti. Machosius, god of the stove, born from a spark when stone struck stone. He was a god with a great love for humanity and their well-being. Millennia ago, the people sought to expand their city. They built a dwelling on the plains and called it the Gwaili Assembly. The Stove God cared greatly for the people, turning himself into minions who went into every home, fostering food and solidarity alike. Alas, their home was taken by a flood. The waters ravaged the Gwaili Assembly and forced the people back south to Liyue Harbor. Though the distance was not far, the journey was plagued by a terrible storm. For a dozen days, the Adepti stayed by their side. During this time, the Stove God cooked an ancient delicacy, flatbread with a meat sauce to stave off the cold and damp. Fit for those on the move. Centuries later, disaster and plague arose once more. The Stove God would appear no longer, for he placed all of his power into the land itself to quell the calamities. His power expended, and his wits greatly reduced. Thus, his body decreased in size. By the time he parted ways with us, he wasn't even the height of a human. He told Rex Lapis and I of the dishes that bring joy and of the secrets of the flame, then went into the mountains and entered into a long slumber. The stove god departed, and Guoba was born. When he awoke, he ate the chili men's cornbread buns placed on the offering table by a young lady in yellow. Though he did not remember the past, he was profoundly moved and decided to follow this young lady thereafter. The stove god had quietly disappeared, but the vendors rose early to hawk their wares. People went out to buy goods, lit their stoves, and cooked food, just as they had done every day for as long as they could remember. In Liyue, things have always been this way. Nature provides, the mountains rejoice, we are blessed by heaven's good grace. Years have gone by. The world has transformed. But our way of life survives. Fame and 
fortune is only a season. It is the moment that we should embrace. Past meets present. Heritage becomes legacy. Long into the future may we thrive. You once told me that dining is the profoundest of customs in the human world. To eat well is to consume vitality itself. And to drink well is to partake of the very essence of the world. It is a matter of paramount importance, you said. For people cannot face the arduous journey ahead on an empty stomach. At once a humble affair and a profound one. A humble meal of maize and spring water is also profound in that. By ensuring one's survival, it, my dear friend, Liri has changed so much while you have slept. Bulba, this is kind of a huge deal. Why didn't you say anything? Uh, he... he is not who he once was. Even the power of speech evades him now. Oh. Bulba, but... but... Shangling. Do not be saddened, youngling. There are two sides to everything. Guo Ba may have lost many of his formal faculties, but he is now as carefree as can be, without a single worry in the whole world. In this world we inhabit, who can truly be said to live a life free of all woes? Those, but he has gone further than us in his journey. He had both wisdom and courage. Everything he took upon himself, he was also ready to part with. His carefree demeanor today is a testament to the fact that he is at rest. So since you are his friend, take good care of him. Go out to walk. I will! You can count on me! Xiangling, you have an adeptal affinity. Guoba follows you around the moment he awoke. He was met with a familiar flavor in the chili mince cornbread. After all that time, he still recognized the dish he had invented. And he approved of you as the one who had cooked it. That's right. The taste of one's home cuisine always brings back memories of home. Though he remembered nothing, eating the food you had cooked gave him a feeling of familiarity. You may be the first person in history to give the stove god the experience of being a satisfied customer. That makes sense. If that's true, I couldn't be happier. Because putting a smile on customers' faces is what we chefs are called to do. Well then, it's getting late and I still have things to do. Traveler, Paimon, Xiangling, thank you all very much. I guess my dad's probably heard the good news already, but I should still go catch up with him. Master, it's been a he thinks about you all the time, you know. Oh, goodness me. Then, off we go, then. Let's saunter over, Jen. Time to go. Hi, Dad. I'm back. Ah. Oh, no. Globe is taken off. Hmm? Ah. Oh, it's you. Hello there, old friend. Bless my soul. Are you out for a stroll as well? Given the season, it felt fitting to take a leisurely walk while the meal is being prepared. Quite right. And it also gave us the chance to run into you. Guoba may not recognize you, but as ever, he seems quite delighted to see you. So, Guoba doesn't remember anything? Friendship will always withstand the ravages of time. Traveler, what do you think of the name of this festival? Moon. The moon is a carrier of countless emotions. Fond memories of those no longer with us. 
Debts of gratitude to old friends. The meaning of ages past and gone. All these things and more. They are why people chase the moon. <laughs> In old age, the sight of such exuberant life force, it, it seems to well up from deep traveler. This moon chase festival. Now, let's have Xiangling brew us a nice pot of tea. We shall drink and chat at our leisure.